This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1925. Build a cash flow statement to see where all of your money flows and goes by Don Starks of simplemoneypro.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. We're going to get right to today's post as we optimize your life. Build a cash flow statement to see where all your money flows and goes by Don Starks of simplemoneypro.com. Hopefully you made it through building your net worth statement without losing your will to live. Next, turn your attention to the flow of money in your life. While I'll refer to this tool as a cash flow statement, for personal finance, I refer to income statements and cash flow statements interchangeably. In the business world, these statements are two different tools that give somewhat different information. But for home finances, we don't need to be that technically correct. I'll call it a cash flow statement because what we want to know is, where is all our money flowing? Is it flowing into our house faster than it's flowing out of our house? Let's see. For this exercise, pull out the list of income sources and expenses that you prepared a couple of weeks ago here. Here are the main parts. Income. Unlike the net worth statement, where assets, positive numbers, were numerous and required their own sections, I usually put all income into one category. Take your list of income sources and tidy them up as part of your cash flow statement. Examples of income. Wages, salary, self-employment income, investment income, and passive income, such as income from rental properties. Expenses. Again, this differs from the net worth statement. Over on the net worth, the liabilities, negative numbers in your life, were few and could be lumped together. Here, on the other hand, expenses are numerous and life will be easier if you make some categories. I'm giving some examples, but feel free to make your own or rearrange these so they make the most sense to you. Here are some expenses you might have. Housing, mortgage or rent payments, utilities, homeowner or renter insurance, and property tax. Transportation, vehicle loan payment, car maintenance, property tax, and public transportation. Medical and health, medical bills, pharmacy costs, vitamins or supplements, and a health club membership. Food, groceries, and dining out personal expenses, clothing, toiletries, books or supplies, haircuts, gifts, pet supplies, education, vacation, entertainment, and spending money. Insurance, health insurance, disability insurance, auto insurance, home or renter insurance, life insurance, and long-term care insurance. Other debts, student loans, medical debts, and credit card balances. Savings, emergency fund, retirement savings, and college savings. And finally, charitable giving. Notes on expenses. Slice and dice your expenses in whatever way works best for you. The previously mentioned list is certainly not exhaustive, but should get your mental juices flowing to make a comprehensive list. Some options include rearranging categories to put all debt payments together or perhaps you organize them to showcase your spending priorities. There's no right or wrong way to organize this. Just make sure it makes sense to you. I suggest that you either report all the income and expenses monthly or annually, whichever you prefer is fine. Don't forget things like auto insurance, which typically is billed semi-annually. Another suggestion is to decide whether you wanna work with your pre-tax income or after-tax income. I recommend using after-tax income, particularly if you receive a paycheck that has taxes withheld. Just start with the net income on your check as your income and go from there. You likely will ignore retirement savings then, however, as this is typically deducted pre-tax, which is fine because what we really wanna know is how your household money is flowing. If you prefer to put your cash flow statement in terms of pre-tax income, Just be sure to include categories for federal and state income tax, as well as employer-sponsored retirement savings. 
The goal here is to attempt to capture all your inflows and outflows. Go deep and be as thorough as you can so you don't miss anything. Compute your net cash flow. Calculate your total income and your total expenses. Your income minus your expenses is your net income or net cash flow. Hopefully, your net cash flow is a positive number. If it isn't, then you're probably in a situation where you're racking up credit card debt because your income is inadequate to cover your expenses. If the net cash flow is positive, where is that extra going? Into savings? In truth, your net cash flow should be zero since you should have accounted for where every dollar went that came into your house. The money went somewhere and your job is to be a detective and find out where. Don't give up. The more seriously and honestly you conduct this exercise, the better off you'll be in the long run. Keep at it. You just listened to the post titled, Build a Cash Flow Statement to See Where All Your Money Flows and Goes by Don Starks of simplemoneypro.com. I think this article really highlights what in my opinion is the most important aspect of money management a focus on the gap between your income and expenses. In this article, it's referred to as net income or net cash flow. But when I talk about the gap on this show, I'm really talking about the same thing. Wealth is built in the gap. We grow the gap by increasing income and reducing expenses. We protect the gap by making sure we don't fall victim to lifestyle inflation. We monitor the gap by tracking our expenses budgeting, and calculating our savings rate each month. And we can deploy the gap to get our money working for us in a variety of ways. We can deploy or use the gap to pay off debt, build an emergency fund, and invest for our future. A focus on the gap is really about money management. And this is a powerful and reliable way to build wealth. If you don't have a gap between your income and expenses, your options are really limited. The process of tracking your income and expenses sounds daunting to many people, but I found it very empowering. Peter Drucker has said, you can't improve what you don't measure. And that definitely applies here. Growing awareness around what your gap is now is the first step in improving and deploying it optimally. That should do it for another edition of Optimal Finance Daily. I'll be back tomorrow as usual. So I'll see you there on the Wednesday show where your optimal life awaits.